test test. Okay, um, I think it's time to start right now. Uh, hello, everyone, and good morning. So, um, welcome uh, you guys to join my talk today. Uh, this is the last day for Open Source Summit, and uh, uh, I'll talk about the open and neutral edge computing architecture, how to do that and why to do that. Um, for my background, you may find the information at the website, so I will not repeat that right now. Um, a little bit background about uh, our team, actually. Uh, we are part of the office of CTO of VMware, and based in Beijing, actually. Uh, our team have a name called uh, Edge Computing Lab. Um, the mission is to uh, investigate potential disruptive technology challenges and uh, business opportunity on edge computing and uh, industrial IoT. Create some unique values and uh, uh, some uh, new product solutions for enterprise customers. You may all know that VMware is a pretty leading vendor for cloud, pri uh, private, hybrid, and uh, enterprise mobile management. Uh, we are also looking into this new area. So our focus right now is basically uh, falling into two directions. One is that horizontally, we want to create a general uh, multi-layer platforms uh, with open ecosystems. The other is vertical, which is relative to uh, VMware's core business, uh, the data center management. I want to see uh, some new approach to do the data center management uh, with the edge computing and IoT technologies. Uh, so the focus here around the innovation projects, not existing products. Some examples uh, I'll talk about a little bit uh, today is about uh, virtualized edge device, um, edge native applications a little bit more, uh, machine learning inference on accelerators, uh, uh, some others, like robot smart data centers, uh, that, will not, that will be not uh, mentioned a lot today. So as you know, that VMware is a software company. Uh, we do a lot of software, and most of the team are working on software only. But here, our team at Beijing is a kind of a special team. Uh, we have a physical lab for the edge. A lot of devices you can find on the screen. Uh, we got that uh, either by our, ourselves or some uh, con uh, contribution from our partners. And also some components for uh, machine learning accelerators. I will uh, mention that a little more later. Also some robot-based uh, stuff. So uh, let's start uh, uh, talking about the topics, main topics today. Uh, some background, firstly. Uh, you may all know that in the recent years, uh, Internet of Things and edge computing are pretty popular. And they are often mentioned by different uh, uh, companies globally in different industries, the telecom, enterprise, consumer, internet company, a lot of um, voice about that. But overall, according to RDC's uh, landscape, uh, we, I post to uh, a screenshot here, uh, uh, picture here, we can see that globally, there are, uh, the, the, markets, the, the market, the vendor names are quite, uh, you know, quite many, uh, the, the market is quite crowded. In 2016, that's, the right, that's the, on the left, In 2018, that's on the right. So overall, you may get the impression that more and more uh, companies want to get involved in this uh, industry, get, want to get involved in this, um, in this market. And that leads to uh, some pretty interesting situation. We see a lot of chimney systems, a lot of silos de uh, deployment uh, deployed in the customers uh, on prime. And uh, um, in, a, a, in a big picture, quite a few of most of these systems are not well integrated with one another pretty well. Another number we got also from the third party uh, consulting firms. Uh, uh, in 2018, the result that uh, more than uh, 2,000 global vendors in, the, in this industry, uh, US, China, Germany, are the top three. So why is that? That's kind of an interesting question we uh, discussed in the last, in last two years. Uh, the overall impression is that because all these uh, systems, all these vendors, uh, got de uh, deployed these systems, they are in a pretty early stage. That's a good thing for Internet of Things and idle computing, but also uh, uh, trigger some issues uh, for the customers because uh, they want to uh, control the cost, they want to get more value, uh, and uh, it is challenging for them to get all things to consolidate uh, uh, together. Okay, so from our perspective, from VMware's perspective, what's edge computing and what's the rough, the big picture architecture? This is a reference architecture. Uh, so from top down, we see that uh, generally people will have some uh, cloud in place, either on-prem or hybrid or 
in the public cloud, and they are somehow connected to the, to the location, to the edge locations. In some cases, there are some uh, compute edge. We call it a compute edge, or someone call that infrastructure edge, or someone call that edge cloud. These are uh, basically reliable servers, and they may sit in a certain uh, maybe network closet or small half height rack uh, in the uh, robo position, and then they can run some um, uh, somehow complex jobs uh, distributed from the real cloud. And then if the case is around IoT. They have strings, devices, and uh, endpoints uh, to connect back to the cloud. There will be generally some edge device, uh, device edge layer exists in the whole architecture. This is not in every case, but uh, most cases there are, especially for enterprises, because they want to uh, ensure there are enough and uh, just enough data uh, collected and passed to the cloud and process. So. Um, we, we see a pretty interesting, some pretty interesting things will happen on the edge device layer, and that's also the major topic and the major focus for our team uh, within the company. Okay, so what's that? We all understand that in the cloud, uh, um, all kinds of applications are running there in all kinds of frameworks, cloud native, traditional, um, different architecture. Uh, and on the other hand, on the edge layer, we all see similar thing happens gradually. Uh, maybe a dozen years ago, the edge location is not connected well with the cloud yet. There are some pretty old-fashioned applications running there on pretty old uh, OS, or even know the general purpose OS. Uh, in our case, uh, it's totally different. But right now, uh, with the devices, with all the endpoints connected back to the cloud, we see more and more requirement uh, to well manage the applications on the edge, especially on the edge device layer here, and how to manage all these applications. How to make sure the data exists on these uh, edge devices are well monitored, and uh, their life cycle, their interaction, the isolation are in place. We see a graded requirement comes out that we need, uh, the customer probably needs some central wrapper to manage application data uh, remotely and their lifecycle management and uh, integrate with certain application marketplace uh, remotely, probably remotely, and uh, distributed, uh, distribute the application and data to the edge dynamically. And they could push updates to the edge. They could um, make some policy-based uh, management mechanisms and then they could, different, they could support different uh, packaging methods like VM-based, like container-based applications. That's kind of uh, some general requirement. And one major thing or major challenge in this whole picture is that enterprise customers may often have a concern when they want to deploy a certain edge computing system or industrial IoT system, how they could control their own data on the edge. You know, as I mentioned at the very beginning, in the world, uh, most of the system are kind of siloed from one another. And uh, that's all uh, vertical systems. The vendor may control all the paths, not only the infrastructure, but also the application, business data, how the customer could really control their data. So we see we, the proposal, the architecture proposal here is that uh, we see the requirement to decouple the infrastructure layer and the application layer. We see the requirement to manage, manage the infrastructure separately from the application layer, and the customer have, should have the full control of all their data and the relative applications. And they could send data to what, what, uh, wherever they want. And that's the whole picture, and that's the major direction we want to explore. So that's the full context for all our relative projects. Talking about the multi-layer infrastructure, uh, the architecture, this is a technical stack for, uh, you know, right now uh, contributing in our team. Uh, from bottom up, we see a lot of different uh, uh, devices there. Uh, in, the, in the middle column, uh, there are maybe some traditional hardware components like a CPU, the RAM, the disk, and there are more and more uh, components appear to, su to support the machine learning inference on edge devices, like some embedded GPU, FP, FPGA component, XP, uh, XPU, or maybe TPU, VPU, and some async components. 
And on top of that, uh, we have a project called Asteroid to virtualize the edge devices with the Type 1 hypervisor. I will refer to some other open source projects here also, because the topic here is mostly around architecture, so I will not talk a little, uh, too much details about how the project is implemented, but uh, you know, maybe a little bit. And on, on top of that, for the application platform or framework layer, we have another project called Supernova, which is pretty relative to Edge Foundry. That's an open source project uh, under Linux Foundation Edge Umbrella pro pro program. Uh, that, uh, that will provide the marketplace I mentioned earlier in the, uh, earlier, uh, in, in the slides. Another project we call, uh, oh, sorry, that, that, that's the, the project on marketplace about uh, Nebula. Uh, the Supernova project is run in machine learning inference service, which is also relative to Agile Foundry. Uh, all these three, uh, three green blocks are, are the major uh, projects I will mention uh, talk a little more today. The, the, that's the blue ones. The green ones uh, are kind of uh, uh, mostly relative to the smart data center management, uh, so I will leave that to later. Actually, uh, some project will also be uh, talked um, at uh, Open Source Summit Europe. Okay, about uh, infrastructure. So why hypervisor in the device edge? Um, we see that, uh, as I mentioned, uh, in the last decades, before the edge, before the traditional industry system connected to the internet, uh, people have limited, uh, almost no concern about uh, how these devices should be, should be managed remotely, how that should be connected back, because there is no such uh, uh, connection, and no, there, is, there are some air um, isolation, actually. But uh, with more and more system, IoT system, IoT uh, uh, edge computing system in place, enterprises see the potential challenge or risk uh, appear gradually. More and more system may be placed in, into one place, for example, smart manufacturing. In the same production line, there are more, more and more boxes in place. Measure all these sensors on different machines, get the data. They may come from different vendors, and then they may run diff totally different applications on top of different operating systems and get different data. The, the, the companies have to uh, collect all these data, manage all these different, different boxes in a different way because they are uh, siloed systems. And uh, with more and more requirement to place the computing tasks on the edge, on the edge devices, the requirement on the computing resources of the box, on the box will be stronger. We see a trend coming uh, right now. Uh, that is, the, the computing resources for these small boxes uh, is more and more powerful. Uh, maybe uh, gradually, uh, gradually uh, grows from the traditional MCU to the more powerful CPU mode, from ARM to x86 uh, platform. That happens. And uh, people want to consolidate all this stuff together to simplify the management, to uh, improve the automation, to make more operations happen on edge. So that's the requirement for hypervisor here, uh, generally. This is a reference to the uh, open source project I mentioned earlier. That's uh, called Edge Virtualization Engine, part of the LF Edge uh, uh, Umbrella Foundation. Uh, the overall idea kind of the similar, or we share the similar vision for this uh, issue on the edge devices. Uh, the, for the on-prem deployment, uh, there are diver diversity, complexity issues to be resolved. Um, users want to avoid certain locking, and they want to deploy the common API to operate all this hardware and enable a pretty flexible uh, control of all the applications data on the edge devices. Here's a more detailed architecture of the EV project. I will not probably talk a lot about that. I'm not an expert of EV, but uh, you may go to the uh, fedge.org website to check out the check out the details of the architecture, and they also share the source code there. The the, the reference implementation is uh, based on Zen uh, technology. Okay, so how about us? Uh, the project Asteroid uh, is the, uh, the, the, the project we are working on for the infrastructure layer. Uh, you may find uh, this is a pretty typical three-tier architecture from left to side for the scenes, edge devices, and the cloud. I put all these uh, 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 kind of uh, edge server or infrastructure edge layer into the cloud because generally they are operation model is pretty similar to what we do right now in the, uh, in the data center in private or hybrid cloud, either for enterprises or for the telecom case. But for the edge devices, there are pretty limited resources. 
Um, I'm sorry that because uh, formula I tried to uh, run a live demo here, but I found that the power cable is not long enough. So uh, this is a, just an example of the small edge devices, which is pretty small, similar to Raspberry Pi, but this box is uh, x86 uh, CPU based. Uh, it can run all this general purpose. We can run the hypervisor here on the box. And this is pretty small, and generally we found that in the in this case, real case, uh, the edge device is a little bigger, maybe uh, smaller or bigger than a laptop, but that is uh, good enough to have this technology work there. So from bottom up, in the column layer, um, we have, the hypervisor, we have the, all the hardware, and then we can put type one hypervisor on top of that with certain security hardening, uh, supporting the uh, TPM and maybe the VTPM into the VM layer, and then we can run multiple VMs on top of that. Uh, multiple means generally not too many, maybe three to five uh, for a kind of mid-sized box. And within different VMs, that's the key part. The customer can run different uh, embedded system, uh, embedded operating system, or different uh, IoT OS there. And in that case, uh, they can run different application frameworks for edge computing, for IoT case there. Here in architecture, uh, for example, we can run Edge Foundry, we can run other open source frameworks there, and they could uh, connect with uh, the external endpoints and the things with the I/O interfaces on the box, or uh, either in the wireless, wireless or in a wired uh, fashion, and to ensure the IDVs are well connected with the cloud, because we see a, a pretty common situation for the question is that the IDVs are connected to the cloud via the internet, and the connection is generally not mutual or uh, IP reachable. Uh, the general, uh, the edge device could only see the cloud and connect to register to the service, but the service cannot reach, the, uh, you know, in first hand out to the device. So we leverage uh, a pretty common uh, power sub uh, mechanisms uh, to register the device for the virtualized box and uh, manage that uh, box remotely from the cloud in a pretty similar fashion as uh, the IT administrators manage the host in the data centers. Uh, that removes a lot of concern from the IT perspective because for enterprises, with all these devices connected to the cloud, to the data center, the IT guys will have pretty serious concern about how this stuff uh, can build, what's the security hardening situation there, how we can ensure that they are compliant with all the security and the networking policy standard in enterprises. Without that, it will be quite challenging for the OT guys to convince the IT guys to uh, permit all this connection. So we try to address this issue. This issue. Another thing uh, I mentioned, uh, with the consolidation, we can put multiple physical, multiple applications originally running on different physical devices into the same one. So that saves space, that saves power, that simplify, simplify um, the, uh, the management. And with the uh, kind of a software-defined networking functions, we can secure, isolate all these uh, applications ensure that they are running a different uh, uh, operating system in different VMs. And uh, go a step further, it's also possible to enable multi-tenancy and the micro is much similar as in a data center. You can think that for, in the future, for IoT system end-to-end, -end, from the data center, from the application in the data center, to the things, to the sensors, all these uh, vertical systems could be isolated uh, completely end to end from the cloud to the to the things, completely, and uh, with all these things, to, uh, things together, we as I mentioned, multiple as application frameworks are supported that provide a pretty wide flex flexibility for the application developers to keep their current uh, um, efforts, current uh, um, applications uh, running without uh, much migration efforts and also protect the enterprise uh, investment uh, before. So that's the whole idea for the asteroid so, so far. Okay, that's the, that's the first project on the infrastructure layer. So for the second project uh, about Nebula and the marketplace, as I mentioned, uh, there are actually different edge computing frameworks right now existing in the industry. And uh, Azure Foundry is one uh, pretty good example uh, 
uh, hosted by Linux Foundation Edge Umbrella uh, program. We actually uh, joined the efforts about more than, I think, more than two years ago, early of 2017. Uh, uh, and uh, uh, for a little background, the Azure Foundry is a, a micro, uh, microservice architecture based, and uh, that's all, all these services are packed into small containers. They can run in the same box, and uh, technically, they also can be distributed into different uh, uh, physical boxes also. And the only issue we find all the potential constraints we find on the framework is that uh, uh, officially on the community, there are uh, just some basic uh, services running in architecture. The users, the customers have the flexibility to, com to, to, to uh, build their own applications uh, only if that's compatible with the API in the, in the framework. But uh, it's not very convenient for them to manage the life cycle of all these applications, third party application frameworks together with Azure Foundry. Azure Foundry is a uh, a basic framework. Uh, you have some third-party applications. Your application could run there, but how do you manage? How do you manage life cycle? And how do you see other applications created by other vendors? Uh, that make some limitation when we're trying to expand the community, when we're trying to expand the ecosystem. So the idea here is that we want to build a marketplace for the foundry uh, for its third-party applications. So the uh, users, enterprise users, have the flexibility to, uh, to manage their third-party applications remotely. These marketplaces could be uh, deployed on-prem in, in their own cloud, or they could uh, set up certain public cloud and uh, open the services to other vendors so they can develop their own applications, upload there, and uh, uh, the users could download applications and push to their own edge devices. This, the mechanisms will be quite similar to Android App Store, if you can imagine. Uh, you, you know, the edge device is similar to Android-based uh, mobile. The user have the flexibility to uh, download whatever they want. Uh, going further, that's also open a commercial opportunity for SVs, for SIs, for device vendors to uh, monetize their own, maybe close the uh, source-based, uh, you know, uh, applications uh, within this uh, in, within this uh, framework, this infrastructure. So we see that's a pretty interesting project. And uh, actually, the project Nebula, we we finished most of the code already <laughs> in uh, open uh, internal open source uh, process right now. Uh, actually, when I applied the uh, talk for Open Source Summit a few months ago, I we assumed that the open source process will be finished in time, but uh, unfortunately it's not. So I, I could only talk about the architecture, and you may check out the video on my YouTube, uh, YouTube channel, and uh, hopefully that will be open source and published completely very soon. Um, so that's the full idea. And uh, for, that, for that project, we also uh, implemented some reference uh, applications uh, uh, to show the capabilities. One example is the local UI. We implement that uh, uh, on top of the Edge, Edge, Edge framework architecture. Uh, another example is that the video streaming uh, service, we can, um, uh, we can uh, get all these uh, streaming video from certain local IP-based camera connect to the device and show that, show that uh, video and pass that back to the cloud and to other services. Uh, some other examples like, uh, like custom cloud, uh, cloud connection, as I mentioned earlier, people will generally want to have a custom uh, data consumption analysis services in their different use cases. And uh, that's a pretty good feature in Azure Foundry, which support uh, multiple custom uh, cloud connection. Uh, Azure Foundry does not, come, uh, does not bundle with certain specific uh, data analytics cloud. So that's a very good uh, uh, feature we, we could leverage. Of course, if we want to uh, download and install certain third-party applications, we need an application installer that's also in the yellow box to, to, to achieve that goal uh, in the big hole. That's the current status uh, for the Azure Foundry uh, um, marketplace. Going a step further, if we think bigger, not only about the Azure Foundry, but also some other cases, uh, I mean, edge computing architecture, the services provided by different companies, this is a kind of conceptual vision for the uh, Project Nebula in the future. If we see uh, a step back, we, we, we can see that for enterprise customers, they have multiple choices when they want to deploy the ad computing systems. They, have, they can choose that options from different vendors. Here, list a, a few logo there. But the issue here is that if they, after they make a decision, 
they have to deploy that on their devices in their data center. And uh, if they do not feel very good with anyone, with any uh, vendor in the list or not in the list, it will be quite not convenient for them to switch to another vendor. It will be not quite convenient for them to integrate with integrate one IoT system with another. So we are thinking that whether we can expand the scope for Nebula a little bit, not only for Azure Foundry, but also for other edge computing framework. We can deploy the edge computing frameworks themselves directly to certain box, manage the framework lifecycle, and help customers, help the enterprise users to manage lifecycle. And once they find it's not a, quite good of uh, the, the, their requirement change, they want to switch to the other one, we have the capabilities for them to decommission the existing exi uh, edge computing frameworks and download another one, whatever they choose afterwards. For example, they may switch from, from the Azure Foundry to another uh, framework and maybe switch back to another. That's also possible. In the case, we can decouple the hardware actually the, from the operating system perspective, they couple the operating system and all the resources below from the edge computing frameworks and applications on top of that completely. In a case, people will have much more flexibility and their cost, their potential, their risk to be locking will be much less. That's the future we also want to explore later. Okay, so the third project uh, supernova was that. As I mentioned earlier, uh, we see uh, in the recent years there is a pretty strong trend saying that about how we can leverage machine learning technologies in the community in the IoT systems. Uh, you may also attend some workshops uh, a few days ago in the Open Source Summit. Uh, some vendors provide some workshops about how to make visual, visual uh, analytics, inferences uh, on edge on a small device, a camera, and uh, how to make all the things work. That's pretty good, uh, pretty cool technologies. Uh, actually, there are also a few vendors globally uh, provide similar technologies. The general common uh, approach is to uh, deploy certain we call it hardware accelerators uh, onto the box. Whether it is a common box or kind of specially uh, created, manufactured box, uh, with all these accelerators, they could uh, uh, run certain special SDKs but also generally created by the vendor and uh, trigger the machine learning inference uh, pretty productively, efficiently on the box. And in the mode, generally the data will be pushed in the cloud and the training with all these big data volumes all together, get a pretty big and accurate model, and then may optimize that uh, neural net models and uh, 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 push that to the devices. Sometimes they may compile the data models into native code and run that code on the edge devices to get a pretty fast and uh, uh, exact enough result and take some following actions to you know, operate uh, things or uh, make some decisions later, you know, recognize certain opportunities, things like that. And uh, actually, the issue here is that uh, different vendors, the accelerators are heterogeneous. Uh, here are some examples from uh, companies like Intel, uh, NVIDIA, AMD, Google, and the Xilinx. These are top vendors, of course, some others like Qualcomm, others. And there are relative SDKs like OpenVINO, TensorRT, Rockham, uh, TensorFlow Light, and uh, uh, DNDK, that's come from the Zilinx, uh, and others, a lot of others. They are, uh, from API perspective, they are, they are different. From hardware perspective, the structure is also heterogeneous. And on the cloud, we see uh, also pretty heterogeneous, uh, uh, pretty different uh, machine learning training frameworks on the cloud how we can simplify the process. Because in the current situation, the customer, the users have to choose a certain model firstly and uh, code uh, and make code changes to support certain accelerators and SDKs specifically. And uh, they even don't know whether that works before that's deployed. Uh, here the first supernova, we want to create a pretty common layer for machine learning inference. Uh, we want to integrate with Azure Foundry and that support uh, heterogeneous hardware accelerators and their SDKs underneath. 
and that connect, integrate with the multiple machine learning training frameworks in the cloud. In a way, we want to achieve the goal to decouple the, 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 uh, the relation, de decouple the, the, the edge from the cloud, the hardware layer from the software on the edge devices, uh, generally. So simplify uh, the overall operations and management. Here also we refer the similar architecture. You may find that also talk a little bit about the yellow box on the right, the machine learning inference server. So that's the overall architecture here. Uh, also, this project also in the open source processing. <laughs> we, we, we cannot show the code right now, but hopefully that will be released uh, to the uh, VMware GitHub um, account uh, pretty, uh, pretty soon. Okay, so we have just five minutes, uh, just last slide maybe. Uh, besides all these projects, uh, as I mentioned, uh, we um, advocate uh, the uh, Edge Foundry and uh, other IF Edge projects a lot in China. Besides official members, we also build some um, WeChat groups. And it's kind of a discussion groups in China. I track a lot of users there. So uh, if um, for you guys, you are not a part of the community or didn't join the discussion, I encourage you guys to join the discussion, whether in US or, or wherever place you come from. Um, that's a pretty good uh, framework we want to uh, advocate and uh, um, you know, expand that usage a lot. So uh, some key takeaways. Um, first, the edge uh, should be loosely coupled and integrated well with the cloud. And uh, the open and neutral architecture is very important to ensure the enterprise users have lower TCO, have higher ROI. And uh, multi-layers architecture on edge is a long-term architecture we want to pursue generally in, uh, in a few years. Uh, so big picture, please refer to the success story in the cloud. That's all the information I want to share today. Uh, I think I have, we also have some uh, minutes for questions. Uh, any questions? Please? Good question. Yeah, Acrino is uh, you know um, a data project. The major use case is around uh, uh, telecom cloud, how to orchestrate the applications there. I found maybe Tina is that you there? Yeah, Tina is the expert, uh, the tech lead for Acrino project. So around Acrino, you may ask her directly. I can only say that Edge Foundry is uh, well integrated. There are some use cases for Acrino to deploy Edge Foundry uh, the framework onto the edge device layer and. Uh, uh, further, that could connect to certain sensors around. So that's a kind of uh, uh, top-down or from cloud to the edge integration mechanisms. Arduino itself does not connect with the sensors directly. So that they are kind of two layers from the cloud to edge. You may see from cloud to the edge servers around base station and then to the edge devices in the fields and then to the sensors um, in, the, in the factories. And the other questions? Okay, thank you. Uh, so I will uh, hang around a little bit in the hallway after the session, so feel free to ask me questions if you want. Thank you very much.